everyone. Right now we're doing a little bit of a supercharged MAME 2003 stream test. The core is now at 28% faster. As far as the window of opportunity for better performance and speed on games that need it, such as Cruising USA, World, War Gods, and even stuff like the Wayne Gretzky 3D Hockey. And of course games like Carnival, I mean, the whole shebang are all going to be running better. But on top of that, we have an additional core option that uh, we got added. Uh, let's go into options here. And we have turbo boost like Ludicrous N64 at factor of 20 and reverse overclock at a factor of 86. If you take 100 minus 86, that's 14% faster in addition to the 28% faster. And this is going to be incredibly awesome. Let's check it out for yourself here. Quick menu resume. And we have the hardest difficulty with Ripter. I put it on absolute hardest difficulty so we can see what kind of crazy combos he could do to me. Master combo, right? Oh, yeah. I felt that. <laughs> oh man, I talked in my last video, Cruise and World, about the latest TV show I was watching. I decided to give the original Fantasy Island from 1978 another go because I watched the Bloomhouse Fantasy Island last year and I saw that the new one came out and got pretty much lackluster reviews. And this is kind of odd, but when I watched the Bloomhouse movie, like uh, Spoiler Alert, people were going to the island. And they were essentially asking for wishes and stuff, almost like Jin style, like Wishmaster Andrew Duvall for the win. And no matter what they wish for, they came out in a bad, bad way. So it's kind of interesting the way it worked out. And I'm like, I don't remember the original Fantasy Island being like this, real dark and taking twisty turns. But it really was. It really was a dark show. Uh, just take, for instance, the very first episode, the pilot episode. You have a group of cheerleaders who want to rekindle the spark they had when they were a cheerleader squad. And uh, all of a sudden, they get sent to a cabin 40 miles away from uh, everybody else's civilization in the uh, island. And they start, spoiler alert, getting killed off one by one. Scary movie style, or should we say scream fashion, like Sydney style. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, this is supposed to be a fantasy show, and people are getting killed off one by one. It was pretty interesting. Felt like a mixture between Love Bird, uh, Love Boat, not Love Bird, Love Boat, and Black Mirror. Like, uh, Black Mirror Light and Love Boat. Let me take the gist of the entirety of the show with Ricardo Montalban, who plays an awesome, awesome con in the original Star Trek series, as well as in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. And we have that curse of, like, of course, Star Trek movies being considered good if they're even number and bad if they're uh, odd number. Ah, uh, new fatality! Oh, jeez. But yes, uh, Khan was so awesome. And of course, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch did a fun, fun uh, turn toward the forces con as well before he did, like, of course, uh, Sherlock Holmes, he was always a fun, fun actor, and then of course he went on to Doctor Strange. And I'm kind of wondering with the new Marvel series, if uh, Better Than Cumberbatch is actually going to be voiced in Doctor Strange in that show as well. And what if it's like, uh, stuff like, what if Peter Parker's Uncle Ben never died, etc. And, uh, I don't think that's much of a spoiler alert, because I think everybody knows about Uncle Ben by now. I mean, it's just, every time you watch a Spider-Man movie, they redo the damn uh, origin story over and over again, down to the Uncle Ben. Okay, let's check this out. Uh, okay, and I'm looking forward to the next Venom movie, and this is what I think here. I have my own fan theory about Venom. I watched a Jake Allen Hall, Ryan Reynolds movie called Life a few years ago, and let's try doing something interesting here. We're going to go into cheats, enable cheats, we're going to go Infinity Energy, Player One, and uh, this is a set of training wars right now, but I went back to that movie called Life with, uh, of course, Ryan Reynolds and Jake Allen Hall, where it's basically kind of like a loose remake of a movie such as Alien, but uh, if you take into account the way the movie plays out, I think it's more of an origin story from Venom, like a symbiote from Venom. And then when I'm watching the movie Venom, there's this weird placard in the middle of the movie that says life, so I almost think they tie together, and I think it's intentional, but without the licensed ability for the movie. So if you watch the Jake Allen Hall, Ryan Reynolds movie called Life, and then you watch uh, Venom right afterwards, I think it's a great, great winning combination. I mean, what other movies have you seen through history? They feel like they can easily be like, uh, unlicensed uh, representation of it. Um, let's take like uh, Journey to Silius for the original Nintendo, which is clearly a Terminator game without the license. Or we have the unreleased Sunman game, which is clearly a Sunsoft game with the unlicensed Superman. I mean, give me other examples of this. I mean, uh, sometimes they'll actually finalize the game and not have it. And we can do it in reverse where we have like Doki Doki Panic for like, of course, the original Nintendo, uh, should we say Famicom? Oh man, this is insane. But uh, it was reskinned when uh, Nintendo bought that company out into Mario 2, and that's why it's nothing like the other Mario games. Man! Again, I'm playing on the hard difficulty. I feel like I got trolled by the arcade owner here. But it's still fun to see here. It reminds me of the days when I used to 
uh, run games such as NBA Jam, Mortal Kombat, do these fatalities. And uh, my thing back then was when these games like Killer Instinct and Street Fighter were in the arcade, I actually only played Killer Instinct in the arcade one time. I played one single time in the arcade, and I liked it enough to buy it on Super Nintendo and get that CD soundtrack, and I used to play that in my PlayStation 1 when I was playing games like Ridge Racer. Remember taking like the disc out and putting in your disc, like I put like Asia, some nice progressive rock music, heat of the moment, Cartman fashion all the way. But I put in stuff like Metallica, Pantera, Slayer, Megadeth, all those CDs. Oh, I'm playing like Ridge Racer. Man, this is insane. At least do a fatality on me. <laughs> you can't because I have not the energy. Ripper's going down. Let's see what the next match is, but uh, I'll show you how this uh, reverse turbo boost works on the next match. <laughs> Oh, this is so brutally awesome. Oh, yeah? <laughs> man. And uh, the equivalent of this character in a Tekken game would be the kangaroo. Oh, man, he's going to do ultra combo, right? Oh, no, it's a master combo. Blaster combo. Oh, let's bring this out. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Try doing this on hard difficulty. It's insane. Okay, we'll do one more match here. But yes, the original Fantasy Island is far, far darker than you realize. And uh, even the uh, cheerleaders, there's one moment that I thought was funny where uh, basically the females asked for the Beatles, like, you know, John, Ringo, Paul, George, and uh, Tattoo's like, uh, they're busy this weekend, but if you call me later and he kind of winks, I'll come and give you a personal magic show. What kind of magic show is he talking about? I mean, I've heard he's like a womanizer in real life and uh, uh, so be it, but it was so fun to see him. The way, like, they have some of this adult humor in there. And then you have, like, the gentle banter of, like, Ricardo Montalban as well. So, I mean, the show, I mean, Rose Tinted Glasses, I found that it's actually a little bit more entertaining than I remember being as a kid. And clearly, it feels like a, like, almost like a mystical type thing. Or, like, uh, what is the origin of Ricardo Montalban, uh, Montalban on the island? Is he really, like, a god that's stuck on the island, like, in purgatory? I mean, that's what it comes down to. And essentially, if you think about it, isn't the TV show Lost almost like a loose, uh, semi-pseudo Fantasy Island remake? I mean, because a lot of things that people would think in their heads would happen in the gist of the Lost show. And I remember Jack, the doctor on the show, being on the talk show, and they asked him on the show, like, is this what the show is really about? And he's like, nope, it's nothing like that. And then several seasons later, uh, what he actually said, detracted from it being something on the show, was what the ending of the show actually ended up being. And uh, unfortunately, due to the writer's strike, shows like Lost and Heroes, and a few other shows at the time, even Prison Break, they kind of basically went downhill. I remember like Prison Break season one and two, Heroes season one and two, even Lost the several uh, first seasons went downhill considerably during the writer's strike. Wow, 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 wow. Let's turn the energy back off there. Uh, go to Chiefs. Uh, we're going to take this guy down, because I want to be able to see some fatality finish here. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and this is always my favorite type of character. When I play, like, Tekken, I play Steve. When I play Street Fighter, I play Balrog. I mean, you get the idea. This music is awesome. Whoa! <laughs> it's like, slap! 